that. I love watching with those big overcoats and they're all sort of all rugged up and ready for a game. But um, yeah, like like we said, this will be a really interesting game. And let's not forget, I mean, the Texans did start the year 11-1. and one, So they had some good form. They were playing mm. well. But they lost three of the last four games in the regular season and sort of fell in against Cincinnati. So... Um, if they bring early season form, I think they'll be well and truly in this game. And if they'll bring the form that they've played the last four or five weeks, I think they'll, uh, I think they'll get smashed. Yeah. And there's all, we've also got a whole heap of novelty markets on these games. I was just going to ask I've you that. Down in front of me is Tom Brady passing yards, and the uh, line we've got on the passing yards is three hundred and a half yards. Whether you pass over or under three hundred and a half mm. yards in the game tomorrow, it's a dollar ninety a pick. Not sure if you guys have got an opinion on that, but uh, that's a but good line. No, that, that, that's a good. I, to me, that sounds like one where you think oh, if it's a big game, he'll go over it. But I could see him certainly going under it. That's I, a good line, actually. I, like, I do. That is a good line. I like the over on that. I was actually going to ask you what fun bets are there for this. What else do you have? Um, so we've got uh, we've got Matt Ryan over and under passing yards. We've got uh, Russell Wilson over and under passing yards. Um, Marshawn Lynch rushing yards. We've got a line on that. We've got uh, Michael Turner rushing yards. Uh, uh, Julio Jones. We've got receiving yards. We've got Roddy White receiving yards. So they're all up on the website. If you go to betstar.com.au, they're all up on the website. And as we get closer to the game, we'll have more of them up. And as we get closer to the Super Bowl, we'll have more and more of them up as well. Alaskander, thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, good luck with. Uh... Can I take one quick, one more quick second? Yes. I'll just go through really, really quickly the NBA championship market. Absolutely. I know we haven't talked much NBA yet, but it is starting to heat up. Miami are favourites still. They're three dollar favourite. Oklahoma four seventy five. The Clippers. What a season they're having. I think they lost today at home or was it yesterday at home? So that was unexpected. But nonetheless, an amazing season. They're ten dollars into nine dollars. Lakers are ten dollars. I reckon this is the first time I can recall virtually ever that the Clippers have been shorter priced than the Lakers to win the championship, which is uh, which would create a great rivalry in Los Angeles. The Spurs eleven dollars, the Knicks fifteen, and then you go out to double digits. And the NHL is back; they're going to be starting hey. to play. So finally, the uh, the lockout has been resolved, and uh, this is a wide open market. The Penguins eight dollar favorite, the Rangers ten dollars, uh, the Kings are eleven dollars. The, the defending uh, the defending champs are eleven dollars. That's right, defending Stanley Cup champion Los Angeles the, Kings. We can't split this. So if you if you've got a good eye for the NHL and you think uh, you think you know the winner already, then uh, you're going to get very very good value. Sorry about that, Dasher, but I thought I'd <laughs> throw that in for any of the US sports fans that are into the NBA as well. No worries at all, uh, Alice Skander. Thank you very much uh, for your time, and we'll uh, catch you next week on Bet Stars and Stripes. Look forward to it being in studio next week, guys. See you, Al. Alice Skander Good to speak, Al. there as well. Before our next break, we are going to talk about a uh, a wonderful initiative. Uh, Jess Priles is going to join us, also known as Burger Mary. You can visit her uh, blog as well. A, uh, a lot of uh, interest around uh, U.S. sport, particularly at this time of the year. They're certainly providing an opportunity for listeners and U.S. sporting fans. Uh, there'll be a lot of Super Bowl parties uh, going on around Melbourne, but certainly this one, uh, a very, very special one uh, in part. Partnership with BetStar, of course, as well. Jess, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. Sure, thanks for having me on, guys. Now, can you explain a little bit about uh, what you've got planned for uh, for the Super Bowl? I understand a strong, uh, obviously, New Orleans flavour, and uh, combining, obviously, a lot of the traditional authentic foods with, uh, obviously, the love of American football. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, um, I'm, you know, a big NFL fan myself, and uh, I'm big Houdat Nation. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was inspired to actually put a party on myself this year because I just had too many experiences where, you know, it said it was going to be American style wings and it wasn't quite up to scratch. So given that I love New Orleans as well, uh, we put on uh, this event with Betstar at the Precinct Hotel and we've got a great Super Bowl themed menu. So we've got stuff like uh, your chicken wings and a shrimp po' boy and a pulled pork sandwich and dips and tater tots and all sorts of fabulous fried things, of course. Um, and then I've gone ahead and imported some decorations from the States as well. We've got Mardi Gras beads for everyone because, of course, uh, the Super Bowl is the week before Mardi Gras in New Orleans. And it's just going to be a huge big party, really. You know, I wanted to make it as authentic as possible as you would go to a bar in the States more than anything instead of an Australian version of it, I suppose. 
So obviously you've got the, the Precinct Hotel, which is just mm-hmm. down the road from where we are now, uh, heading down towards the MCG uh, in the in the heart of Richmond. Uh, in terms of, of details, if people wanted to find out a little bit more information and how they can get involved, understand you can book tickets in advance and tables uh, and the like. How do people do that? Yeah, well, look, we certainly do recommend that people get their tickets in advance. We, we expect to sell out beforehand. And, you know, we'd really love everybody who wants to come to not miss out. So if you go to www.burgermaster.com, Mary.com and slash Super Bowl. Uh, all the information will be there, including a link to get your tickets. Um, and we've got some guaranteed seating as well, which I think is a really great idea considering how long the games go. <laughs> sounds uh, sounds fantastic, Jess. We wish you all uh, the very best of luck. Anything we might have uh, missed out on that you'd like no, to, uh, to get across? I, well, I just hope the Saints get in next year. That's all I can say. <laughs> in, uh, in, in more ways than one. Uh, Jess, thank you uh, very much for your time. Just putting my Australian hat yeah, on for yeah, a moment that's there as well. Cut that, Dash. Uh, <laughs> Jess Pryles there joining us. We are going to take a quick break. Bet Stars and Stripes. Bet Star, the home of US sport in Australia and to celebrate the they have the $2 power lines in all NFL games including the playoffs from 4pm every Sunday head to betstar.com.au or betstar.mobi to take advantage of this great deal This is Bet Stars and Stripes A one day cricket update for Matt Riley. What can we build for you? Time for an update from the Adelaide Oval. Graham Smokey Dawson. Smokey, how are we looking? Uh, Australia, a big lot of trouble here, Darren. Sri Lanka's victory target, 171. They're 1 for 98 as we start the 27th over. Thiramani is 55. Dilshan, 40. Thurunga out in the first over for a duck, but there's two have put on 98 so far, unbroken in 26 overs. They're cruising along. Australia bowled out for 170 in the 47th over. Brad Haddon, who, as you said before, off the ground, he just uh, twinged his hammy while he was batting. He top scored with 50, and Phil Hughes has uh, had the gloves for about uh, eight overs now. So uh, Sri Lanka bringing up their 100 as uh, Thuramani just uppercuts one over the slips, down to third man. One for 100 in the 27th over. 71 to win, 9 wickets in hand and 23 overs and 4 balls. They're doing it easily at the Adelaide Oval. SEN Summer of Cricket for Frankston Toyota, Toyota's most awarded dealer. Visit frankstontoyota.com.au Bringing back memories of uh, born in the USA on Sunday nights for was it six years going back? Uh, oh, was it that many, mid- Steve? Oh, five, maybe? Four or five, yeah. Four yeah. or five years. Yeah, it's all a blur now, Darren. Yeah. Just I don't know. No, that you song that remember. was uh, that uh, that's a good song. That. Well, they remember we went in and Peter Butler. We had a bunch of different names, and Peter Butler said, "I think we'll call the show Born in the USA." That right? was never. We kind of right. went. Oh. We went. Uh, we got a couple other ideas. He goes, <laughs> "It's called Born in the USA, guys." <laughs> <laughs> okay, Peter. Thank you. We'll have a show. We'll do it. We'll call it that. <laughs> uh, a few SMSs before we get your thoughts on the games that coming up today. In fact, a couple of questions directed around that very path. Christian Lilydale says. Falcons normally start really fast, and then their play calling gets relative, or really conservative. Will Seattle peg them back? I think it's on mm. Falcons offensive co-coordinator to keep the pressure on. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, the thing that Seattle's done, uh, what well, they did to San Francisco was get out early. Uh, last week, Washington got out early, and Seattle fought back. So the Seahawks can do can hurt you a lot of different ways. Yeah, but I, I think that's a great, uh, a good point that uh, the Falcons need to keep that pressure on instead of letting them back in. If they get Seattle down early, they need to keep applying the pressure and try and take them out of the game because Seattle is a team that's going to keep coming at you. No, they will. I think tomorrow the key, if you are, if you're Atlanta, you got to pre- you got to find a way to uh, knock the hell out of Russell Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. yeah, you got to hit him. Because he's, he's great in space. He gets out there and he makes plays and he plays. I, I actually picked them to finish fourth. In the division, did and, you? Yeah, and they were they were one of the top five teams in the NFL. I don't think anyone, even my friends in Seattle, uh, who are absolutely thrilled with uh, with this, um, I think, are uh, surprised that they've been this good. I don't think they oh. think they're going to finish last. Uh, we one, knew they had one, a good defense, but I, I figured that's right. That, I figured rookie, but no one knew about Wilson. No, they I thought figured, Matt Flynn was going to be running this yeah, team. I, I figured he's named. Yeah. I, I don't think I don't rate 
Carroll as a coach, really. And then I thought when he made this determination to go with a rookie, I thought, well, he's mm. really rolling the dice. Yeah. He's got a good defense. Marshawn Lynch is a great running back. Yep. Good def- I mean, they're, Good secondary. Yeah, very good very secondary. Very good secondary. Richard Sherman and the other cat are they're, they're, they're a good team. So yeah. it's – you know, I, 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 really, I know what we're going to see in Seattle. I think they've cooled off a little bit, but I still know what you're going to get. You're going to get – Physical play, yep. you get lots of them pounding Yapping. the ball, lots of talking. <laughs> I, it's, it come, to me, it comes down to Atlanta. Which Atlanta it team does. shows up? It and does. can they keep, if they can keep Matt Ryan upright, because he can throw the ball against anybody. He can, and I think to, for people watching the game, it'd be fascinating to watch Roddy White, Julio Jones, and Tony Gonzalez working against Sherman in that secondary. I think that's going to be fascinating to see, because uh, we saw today in both games uh, defenders getting used and yeah. abused. Champ Bailey getting absolutely an early lesson from uh, Torrey Smith. Yeah. And then uh, Anquan Bolden was absolutely key in those matchups against the Denver secondary. So receivers and Crabtree was almost unguardable uh, yeah, in that, in that second good. game. Yeah. So Ken Roddy White and Julio Jones and Tony Gonzalez do the same thing to Seattle. It'll be fascinating to watch. Very few things worth getting up at waking up at 5 a.m. Mm. Four, I can think of one, maybe two. <laughs> the Seattle, the Seattle Atlanta game tomorrow, probably worth it. Uh, the SOS just tuned in. It's great to hear Steve on the radio. Got a man crush on the cap. Love your old buddy Slim. Yeah. Oh, oh, Slim! Slim. Hey. Good man. Oh, yeah, we love Good Slim. man. Good yeah, 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 Slim, yeah. Man. Well, Cap, Colin Kaepernick has been uh, a revelation at uh, San Francisco, without a doubt. Yeah, I. You just you look at him and you just think, wow. It, I. Okay, I did not like – I said this before. We won't spend too much time on it. I did not like the feel of the move, but I got the move, right? Because yeah. you, And the thing that I did is – and I think I advocate most people do – is trust Jim Harbaugh. No, he's probably yeah. not a guy that you want to spend a weekend with. But dude is smart, and he's won everywhere he's been. Yeah. So you watch him, and you think, he's kind of a jerk. Yeah, but he's a smart jerk, and he turned that team around – did you hear that? That yeah, quickly. He did. They went from single Terry's mess to Harbaugh. Being Just like Stanford. He's, yeah. he's created a culture at Stanford that David Shaw has continued. Yeah. They're talking Stanford top five program you know, next year. Without I mean, question. He's Without turned question. it around in yeah. two places, college and the pros. And I, well, I take it back. He turned it around at UC San Diego or San Diego, University of San Diego as well, where he I, started. And I said uh, on the air, I think it was in San Francisco actually, that, that Harbaugh – uh, is going to be one of the great ones, and I, you know, the great ones make those decisions. Yes, I mean, uh, Belichick made those decisions. Correct. He made the decision to go with Brady over Bledsoe. Correct. Uh, Bill Walsh made the decision to uh, jettison or catapult Steve DeBerg and give the ball yeah. to Joe Montana. So You're you right. trust a guy. You know, he's there every day. He knows these guys, and I'll tell you what. After what we saw from Kaepernick today, he's made the right decision. Now, yeah. I, I, I never doubted. I think eventually yep. it's the right decision. Whether or not he gave the team the ability to win it all this year, more you know, better or gave him a better chance of winning than Alex Smith was the real question and really the only question. And I think uh, – and keep in mind we have to remember that the uh, the battle of the Harbaugh's is still oh, available. Well, John versus be, Jim down, could happen, which you picked. Obviously, yeah. you said Baltimore or San Francisco. That yeah. would be extraordinary. Uh, be Two great. brothers coaching against each other in the Super Bowl. Absolutely amazing. So, Ed, what do you like? you got tomorrow. you got Seattle, Atlanta. What do you like? Who do you like? I'm going to go with Seattle, but it would not surprise me if Atlanta won. I actually do like Atlanta. I've been a fan of what they've done this year. But like everyone else, I'm just not sure how they're going to be come playoff time. I don't consider that uh, dome a huge advantage for them. In a nutshell, off the SMS, we have the beauty of sport and the diversity of opinions. We have a gentleman, Shane, who believes that the Seahawks are the best team in it. He's an idiot. And we have another gentleman. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm sure you know who that is. <laughs> yeah, I do. We have another gentleman who believes that Seattle are the most overrated team still there in the go. mix. So the they're not overrated. The I, I, look, at, I, I love Shane. He's a buddy. He knows I'm, I'm messing. But I, I, they're not overrated. They're that's as a, balanced yeah. a team so that's a as good there team. are that in the NFL. A, that's a good team. What yeah. they did to the 49ers, I mean, granted, that was not the 49ers, but they put the wood yeah. To them, that was as bad a beatdown as I've seen. And they in handled years. the Redskins last week. They did. They're a good team. Don't yeah. sleep on them. No, uh, I like I like Seattle as well. And then in the second game, Ugh. Houston at New, at New England. Mm. I listen. Houston runs the ball well, keeps it out of uh, Brady's hands. They can win that game. And they can't give up the scores the way the first game. What I can't was forty two fourteen or something like no, that when they got blown out. Yeah, they got. Uh, they can't let New England score early. They, I think they got down.